Hi, this is Maths, and it's the number one Eurorack module, and that's not my opinion. If you look at the highest rated modules on Modular Grid, as well as the most popular ones, it's number one in both cases and by far. And the reason it's so popular is that it can do many things. The list on the left is only a subset of what's possible. My goal in this video is not just to show you those things, but also to try and simplify maths so that you understand it and hopefully take it where you want to go. Now, I've heard maths described as an analog computer, a function generator, and all sorts of multivariable equations. And even though all that's true, let's not use those terms because it's quite simple at the core. If I were to simplify it, maths really does three core things, attenuvert, mix, and slew, with some bonus features for each of them. Let's take a high level view first. We said three things, let's start with attenuvert. Attenuvert basically means just like a volume control, only unlike volume, voltage can also go into negative territory. So as long as you are on the right or plus side, these knobs basically increase and reduce voltage levels, but on the left side, they also invert them, which means plus becomes minus and vice versa. Maths has four attenuverters, one for each of its four channels, one, two, three, and four. The second thing Maths does is it's a mixer, which means it takes these four channels and after mangling them, produces a mixed output. Again, there are some bonus features here, which we'll talk about later. And finally, the third thing that Maths does, and this will bake your noodle a little bit, is slew or slow down the rate of changes in voltage and that's done in channels one and four. So basically channels two and three might go through an attenuverter, which means their level will be reduced or inverted, but the rate of change will remain the same and come out through here the same. Whereas channels one and four can slow down, slew, or reduce the rate of voltage change for what goes through them and then comes out. Now I know this needs a little bit more explaining and there are a few more features, but at its core, that's maths. Three core things, attenuvert, mix, and slew or lag voltage changes. One more rule about the lay of the land, the top part from this line and above, all the jacks are inputs and in the bottom part, all these jacks are outputs. So let's get started with the first simple use of maths, which is audio level control. I'll use channel two or three for this and if we take this oscillator and plug it in so you can hear it, right, it has one level, but if we pass it through channel two or three, it doesn't matter, they're both the same, and then send the output of channel three to your ears, we have simple volume control. So that's use number one. Now, if you don't plug anything into two or three, you get by default 10 volts coming in here and five volts coming in here and then out through here. So let's take a look at what that looks like on the graph here. You can see as I move channel three up, it goes all the way up to five volts on the scope and then all the way down to minus five. And if I were to use channel two, it goes all the way up to 10 and down to minus 10. So I could use that, for example, to control the level of plates or plats over here. Right, straight up voltage into an input. Another thing that we can do with attenuverters is moderate the movement of LFOs. So I've got this LFO, for example, changing the pitch of this oscillator, and it's moving too much, in my opinion. If I move it in through here, and then plug the output into here, I can moderate these motions. And get a vibrato. Let's take a look at this sawtooth wave. You can see it's going down from a peak point. If we take it, plug it into, again, let's say channel three, and then plug channel three so that you can check out that. Okay, 
this is the normal waveform and if we go past zero to minus you can see that it's ramping up instead of going down and you can use that for LFOs um, to, to help with phase cancellation and so on. So that's the attenuverting portion of maths. Now let's take a look at the mixer. Now each of the four channels has its own output, which is the result of whatever comes in, the attenuverting and the outputs. And channels one and four also have their own unattenuated outputs, which are called unity outputs as well. And the mixer can combine these into a sum and a couple of other options, which we'll talk about later. But the sum is the easiest to understand. So let's take the sum of the mixer, plug it in so we can hear it, and take the output of one audio source, plug it into three. The output of another audio source, plug it into two. And we can play with the relative levels. Right, so pretty straightforward. We'll talk about the other outputs later, but for now, sum is like a regular mixer. One thing to note here, which will be useful later on, if you plug anything into one of the individual outputs, it will be removed from the mix in any one of these three outputs. So we talked about the attenuverter, we talked about the mixer, let's talk about the third element of maths, which is channels one and four, which are identical, by the way, except for these two outputs, and they are the slew rate or voltage change rate limiters. Now it's easiest to explain using pitch. I'll take this oscillator, so that you can hear it. And I've got a sequence going here, which changes the pitch of the oscillator between two levels. Fairly straightforward. Now let's pass it through either channel one or four. Let's take channel one. Now I'm gonna pass it through a stackable cable so that you can both see the change as well as hear it. And then this will go into the voltage control. Now if you look at the scope, you'll see the voltage is moving between two levels, right? This level and this level. Now what the slew rate limiters do, they can detect voltage moving up and slow it down. Simple glide. And they can also do the same for voltage on its way down. Hence, the names rise and fall. And of course, we can apply them together going up and down. Now remember, our original modulation jumps up and down between notes immediately, so this is a pretty dramatic change. Now, let's focus a bit on the rate of change. Notice that the rate of change is linear, a straight line, but there are a couple of other options as well. The first is a logarithmic curve, and that'll take linear and change it into kind of like a dome-shaped curve. And the other option is exponential. Exponential is a faster motion, sort of like a slide you go down at a theme park. With an exception I'll show you in a bit, this knob controls both rise and fall. And there you have the basics of channels 1 and 4. Now, viewers that are paying attention, I said there are four channels, but there are six inputs up here, and that's because channels one and four have two inputs each. What we were using before was the signal input, which can take any voltage level and slow down it, the change that happens in it. But there's also a trigger input, and that does something a little bit different. What the trig input does is just detect a sharp change in voltage, basically a gate or trigger, and then start a rise-fall cycle from zero volts to 10 volts, and then back from 10 volts to zero. So a rise and a fall immediately one after the other. Let's use channel four to show this. I'm gonna use, by the way, the unity output, which is the unattenuated output of channel four. Channel one has one as well. Now, this is very useful for creating envelopes, for example, VCA envelopes or filter envelopes. Let's check it out. I'll plug it in so that you can see it on the scope, as well as 
it, that it can affect the level, the VCA, in our oscillator. Then plug in our oscillator so that we can hear it. And finally, take the trigger from our sequence and plug it into the trigger. So now, the white line on the scope represents our control voltage, and the purple represents the waveform, the audio coming out, and I can separate them a little bit so they'll be clearer to see. And I'm using an exponential slope here. Remember, kind of like a theme park slide. And you can see I can play with the um, fall or the decay. And I can change the slope to logarithmic, dome-shaped. So I have complete control over both the attack and decay, both the rise and the fall. And remember, behind the scenes, every trigger, the slew rate limiter gets a burst of 10 volts and tries to catch up to that on the rise, and then immediately toggles to zero and tries to catch up to that on the fall. Now, notice both sides of the slope, the rise and the fall, are either logarithmic or exponential. But there's a way around that. If you connect the channel 4, or 1 if that's the case, output, to either the rise or the fall, then if the general very slope is set to logarithmic, the one you're making this feedback loop to will become exponential. So that's sort of like a shark fin, a shark swimming to the right. And that also works the other way around. Let me uh, move the feedback loop from the rise to the fall. And I turned on the cycle here, but let's keep it that way just to have a fast set of attack decays. You can see that if we apply this feedback loop to the fall, our shark is now swimming to the left. So we've got logarithmic on the attack or rise and exponential on the fall. So those are AD envelopes. What if we wanted an ASR envelope? Well, it's really a simple change. All we need to do is plug our gate instead of trigger into the signal input rather than the trigger input. So now, rather than a percussive sound that ramps up and immediately declines, we can have it hold or sustain for as long as our gate is open or our finger is pressing the key. Same thing, and we can still play around with our slopes just like we did before. Likewise, if you want to implement the shark fin trick here, you can do that as well and have one slope be exponential and another be logarithmic. Okay, so those are envelopes. Now, up until now, we've been triggering every envelope. And if we want the envelopes to auto-trigger, we have the cycle button, which will do that for us. And essentially, we're going to be modulating pitch now, essentially turn our attack decay envelope into a repeating low frequency oscillator. And if the output from Unity is too extreme, we could always have more moderate modulation using the attenuverters. So that's how you create an LFO, and you can do that on either of the two channels, one or four. Now, the low in low frequency oscillator doesn't need to stay that way. Let me connect it so that you can see it on the scope. So we can turn this cycling waveform into a VCO, into a voltage controlled oscillator. First, let me show you how it's done manually. I can just shorten the rise or fall speeds until the cycling becomes so fast that it starts generating a tone. Now if I keep changing the rise or fall times independently, what's going to happen is the waveform shape is going to change as the pitch changes. If rise and fall are similar, it's sort of like a triangle shape, and if I make the rise long, it becomes a kind of sawtooth. Now if I wanted to control the pitch of this oscillator by plugging voltage into the rise or fall, I'd be changing the waveform along the way. So the solution is to use the both input. And if I change that, then the waveform will stay the same regardless of the frequency. And with proper luck, 
and some attenuation, you can get this to work across a couple of octaves at least on a volt per octave basis and play this VCO if you want. And if you wanted to change the waveform, you could still do that by changing the rise and fall individually. Now, as long as we're modulating the frequency of this oscillator, and since we have another LFO or VCO on the left, why not patch maths to itself? Turn on the cycle so that it becomes a repetitive attack decay envelope or basically another LFO and modulate the pitch quicker, which is basically getting us into FM territory. It'll be easier if I control the both input of channel 1 here as well. Okay, let's move on to the next nice trick. So this is how slow the LFO goes if rise and fall are moved all the way clockwise. And if that's not slow enough, and I'll use channel two for this because it gives me plus minus 10 volts. I'll plug that into the both input. We can actually take the modulation speed all the way so low that the LFO here will be a 25 minute LFO. We'll have a 25 minute cycle. Now I didn't time this, I'm trusting the manual on this, but even if we bring it up, you can see the LFO speed can be extremely slow. So that's very slow LFOs. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, I've set this up to make things quicker. Let me explain how maths can be an envelope follower. Basically I've got hair mode over here triggering a kick out of disting and then the audio going into maths so that it can be an envelope follower. If I want to take a look at what that looks like on the scope, something like this, right? And I can set the rise and fall to how closely I want to follow this envelope. And now I'll use this signal to sidechain plats over here. So I'll take this, it's going into the level of plats, and then the output is going into here. All right? This is the constant level. This is the sidechain level based on this kick. Pretty straightforward an envelope follower and sidechain. Next up, maths can be a simple clock. I'll use the disting kick for this, turn on the rise and fall cycle, and this little LED shows me how quickly the cycle is cycling through, and then connect the end of cycle output to trigger the kick. Then I can set the rate of the clock by shortening the rise and fall. Now we have an unintentional motorcycle patch. And joking aside, you can of course modulate this with voltage, but the point is here, the end of the cycle is basically a simple clock. On the left, channel one triggers every end of rise, so it's nice to have both those options in case you want them. Now what's really cool is that we can use maths as a clock divider, either channel one or four. Let's keep the clock going here on channel four and then use channel one as our clock divider and this as our source clock. Now I'm gonna use as a second drum source, plats or plates, depending on how you wanna pronounce it. And I'll trigger that out of here. Okay, so now we've got two identical clocks because the rise is set all the way to the left or counterclockwise. But if we increase it, what's going to happen is that it's going to start skipping a clock beat. So now we have the left channel skipping beats depending on the rise setting. 
Now you'll notice a slight delay in the uh, snare hit, and that can be adjusted by changing the slope to exponential or logarithmic depending on what works for you. Now we're dividing by three. Let's change it. So that's a snare every six or seven kicks, and we can change it. And now we're dividing by four. Okay, on to the next one. I'll turn on both cycles, create basically two LFOs in this case. And to make it easier to understand, I'll be modulating pitch, but we can of course modulate any other parameter, filter, or so on. Anyway, the point I want to make here is that by summing up two envelopes, you can get some pretty crazy waveforms. For example, here we have one LFO sort of riding on top of another LFO, and then modulating the pitch in this case. But like I said, it can modulate anything. And imagine if now we started to modulate the rise or fall or both of each of these LFOs. You can get to some pretty nutty waveforms here. So I know I said I wouldn't use math terms, but sum is basically what you get when you add up the negative and positive values coming in through channels 1, 2, 3, and 4. So for example, if you've got minus 10 on channel 2 and plus 5 on channel 3, you'll get a minus 5 out the sum output. Now the OR output will give you the highest positive voltage coming out of channels 1 through 4. And if that sounds a little bit too complex, think of it as we could sum all these voltages or we could do this. Now besides doing things differently, uh, there is another use for this, which is called a rectifier, which means if you don't want negative voltages coming into your module, this will make sure that only the positive modulations make it through. The INV output, by the way, is just like having the sum output go through an inverter. Okay, let's go back to channels 1 and 4. Up until now, I've been mostly showing you how they impact low frequency modulations. But if we take this oscillator as an audio source and plug it in to channel 4, for example, and I'm plugging it into the signal input, not the trigger input, you can see that it lets the audio pass through. It does change it a bit, even at the lowest rise fall rates, so it doesn't let a clean signal through at all times. But as we mess with the rise and fall, and especially if we do it using the both input, it sort of acts like a filter for audio, kind of a mellow low pass filter. Now if we turn on the cycle, then it's mellow no more, it's almost like resonance. Now, because the impact this has is also lowering the level of our sound basically almost to nothing, we can also use this as a kind of VCA. So just to keep things interesting, I will pass my audio through channel one this time, and I'll use the gate coming out of hair mode to be my gate signal. And the idea here is pretty simple. It's basically the opposite of filtering. I'll use the gate signal to open up the filter and hence act like a VCA. Now this isn't perfect and you need to fine tune the settings, the rise and fall settings on the audio channel to make sure that it goes from silence to allowing audio through. But if you're in a pinch for a VCA, you could use this. Now since I'm running my gate through channel 4, through the signal input it's basically acting like an ASR gate, which means I can change the attack by changing the rise and change the release by moving the fall up. So we saw that before, pretty straightforward. So those are just a few of the uses for maths. There are many more in the manual. Now there's one more way to use maths that I'm going to save for another clip in a few days. So hit subscribe and ring the YouTube bell if you want to see that. If you have any other ideas for using maths, put them in the comments section below or any other questions, ask them down below. Hit like if you learned something. Thanks very much for watching.